Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and we'd like to welcome you back to this brand new video series that we have titled The Qibla Controversy, uh, King versus Gibson. And as we have laid out already the plan and the argument, myself and Dr. Jay Smith, who is with me here in studio, uh, we left you last time with this, that we will begin to go through a number of presuppositions that Dr. King have used to refute the findings and the argument of Dan Gibson that the initial direction of prayer or Qibla by early Muslims was not really clear and it wasn't always towards Mecca. And with that says, I'd like to welcome Dr. J back and ask him to unpack these presuppositions for us one video at a time. Thank you so much. It's good to be back again. And we, we uh, are aware of the fact that both King and Gibson agree on one thing to begin with, and that is that these Qiblas are all askew in the beginning periods, the 7th and 8th. Uh, let's just, instead of calling 7th, 8th, ninth, we're going to confuse the people, the viewers, because we're talking about 7th would be 600, 8th would be 700s. Uh, and what uh, King says is that to understand what was happening in the 6th and 700s, since we have nothing written about it, which is into, in and of itself a rather curios uh, curiosity to me. Why is it that the people in the 6th and 700s didn't write about it? they couldn't write. And this is something we've come up with other dis, uh, difficulties when we're looking at Muhammad's biography. And we did this earlier when we're looking at how uh, the whole problem with Mecca, when we did this earlier in our other episodes in, the, in 2018. We brought this up over and over again. It's odd to me that for about 200 years, nothing is written down right. about this man Muhammad, about his life, about Mecca, about the, these people called Muslims, uh, uh, this religion called Islam. Uh, nothing is written down about all this emerging period, this most important period of Islam, because this is where it became, was created. They didn't write down anything about what was happening Which about themselves. Unusual. And unusual. this is always a big curiosity. And Muslims, if you could help us out with this, why is it, why do you think they didn't write any of this down? Why do you think all of this is just a blank? There's nothing there for around 200 years. And for 200 years, if nothing is written down, things were happening. A whole, a whole religion was creating, uh, was starting to be created. And we are, and you can see why Dan Gibson comes in and he asks this very same question that King is noticing when you talk about Zirin on the Qiblas. They are all askew because the buildings are still there. These, the foundations are still there. Over a hundred of these mosques. Dan Gibson has gone and he's actually gone to them and he's sh photographed them and he's found the GPS coordinates for every one of these Qibla walls. And he is asking a very pertinent question. King doesn't think so and King does not. He is very angry with Dan for even bringing this up. And uh, you can see that this is a, uh, there is an ego that is being hurt here. Mm -hmm. This is really an egotist's response. And you can see he does not want to have to deal with this amateur coming out of Canada. He does not want to have to deal with this upstart who has no degree, who has not studied under him, has not come and studied on, and written, read, he believes, in any of these books. So let's go back with that presupposition we talked in the earlier episode. His presupposition is, since we don't know, since it is uh, tabula rasa, nothing is there, we can't understand why these Qiblas are there, why these Qiblas are facing the wrong direction, why none of them, not one, not one is facing Mecca, not one. That's hugely important. Not one is facing Mecca. We've got to find out why. And the best way to go is to go back to these 800, 900, and 10, uh, 1000 AD. Those people who were writing in those centuries. Not to the six and seven hundreds where these mosques were being built. Don't go to them, because there's nothing there. Let's go and see what the 800, 900, and 10 hundreds. And what's fascinating, he does admit that they are also surprised too. They don't know why they don't have these Kiblis in the right track. They don't understand. Now, that, that, that's a curiosity to me. If they're so close to that event, if they're so close to that place, how come they don't have anything written about these Kiblis? That is interesting to me, and especially when you find, you know, diversions, and as you uh, stated it earlier, and we did that in our previous uh, episodes, uh, series, I should say, about the unknown history of Islam, that there are four different, basically, group of directions, if you wish. This is Gibson's response right. to this. And, and, King you know, says, no, 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 there's not four. There's as many as you want to be. Actually, there's so many directions. And this is why you can see there is an agenda here. 
Absolutely. Huge agenda. King wants us to believe that there are so many that everyone, every reason, everyone is different because everyone has a different reason. Yeah. Gibson say no. It's not that it's not really that confusing. In fact, these people were actually pretty good. They King says find, no, they're they not good. They're actually directions. terrible. They can fact, find directions. They can find they can travel. I mean, oh, they, but they, King starts from the premise that they can't. And that's what we need to start with. His whole presupposition is, presupposition is, since they're so early, they are barbaric, they don't, they're clueless, these people don't know their direction, they have no idea what they're doing, therefore, none of their Kiblas are correct. Hmm. Therefore, for that reason, we need to see what the 800, 900, and the 100 people say about them. Which is fascinating because they try to make sense of it and they actually come up with lots of responses which is contradictory from King's standpoint, right? If they have no idea what they're doing, and yet 800, 900, and 10 that he's gonna quote now says, this is what they're doing here, this is what they're doing here, this is what they're doing here, and they're gonna come up with seven different reasons of why they're doing this, then I would suggest, isn't that contradictory from the first statement you just made? You just made a contradiction. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, yes, they do know what they're doing, and here's the reason. No, they don't. That you can't do it that way. You've got to go and see what's on the ground. And that's where Gibson has been very helpful because Gibson says, is, listen, I'm not going to listen to these medieval scholars because these medieval scholars don't know. They admit that they don't know. Are you listening to this, King? Are you hearing this? They do not know. They would like to know. This is their conclusions. Why don't we go back to those actual buildings? Let's go back and see if they're all over the place. And what he found is they're not all over the place. There are actually four. Let's look at them now. Let's look at this slide. And this is a slide we've put up before, this one here. Here are the four different directions. You've seen this before. It's all over the internet. You can just go up and put Kibla, Petra, and you can. this will come up. This is from Dan Gibson's own book. And you can see that, the, that from the very beginning of, the, of Islam, so if Islam began, let's just put the date on it. Let's just say 610, but more than like, like, let's say 632, because that's when Muhammad died. Let's start with 632, okay? So from 632 up until 706. So we're, we're talking about roughly 70 years. For the first 70 to 80 years, for the first 70 to 80 years, every Qibla is facing Petra. And I mean, what a coincidence, right? I mean, that they're all facing the same direction. I thought you just told me that the argument is that they're confused, they're uh, you know illiterate, they don't know what they're doing. Why every one of them is facing in one specific direction? Absolutely, and they're doing a very good job of facing in one direction. Exactly, they're doing a great job. And then suddenly in 706, a kibla appears, and guess what it's called? Kaaba. It's called Wasit. Al Wasit, yeah. What so does in Wasit between? Mean? Exactly. In between. The exactly. first kibla. In 706, that appears that actually shows another direction. And it's named by Al Hajjad the Wasit Mosque. And why? There is a political reason behind that. <laughs> I love this. This is what gets me so excited. When you look and see where that Qibla is, it's in the middle of the, of the desert. There's nothing there. It's not in any city. It's not in any town. There's no rock. There's no hill. There's no mountain. It's just bare sand. There's nothing it's pointing towards until you back up a little bit and you back up and you look and see where it's facing. It's exactly between two cities. Yeah. Guess what the two cities are? Petra and Mecca. Exactly. It comes exactly between Petra and Mecca. So somebody's taking the middle ground. It's a political statement. Now can you see why it's called what's it? Between. Right. Now, isn't that a perfectly, now, stop and think. What does that tell you then about Al-Hajjaj? Well, I mean, he was a uh, political rebel, technically speaking. He asked some tensions with uh, what was going on at the political arena of, of his days. He was the governor under Abdul Malik. So he's the governor right. under the Umayyads. Right. He's way over in Iraq. Yeah. He's exactly. up in the north, eastern core. So he's off to the east. He is what used to be the Sassanid area. So he's in charge of that whole land. He is the one that comes and confronts and kills Ibn Zubair because Ibn Zubair rebels against Abd al-Malik. And goes all the way 687, south. 687, and yeah. he takes the black stone and Correct. he takes it with him down 
to the south. That's right. Down, we don't know where. It doesn't say in any of the traditions that it says where it is. It doesn't say Mecca or anything like that. It's just to the Hijaz. Where is right. the Hijaz? Well, that's the region where you find Mecca, Medina, Jeddah, you know, all of that. It's a central part of the Arabia. Western, yeah, so the, he goes down to that the, area. The western side of, uh, of Al-Hajjaj the Al-Hajjaj is yeah. commissioned to go and confront him. He does confront him. He kills him. And then he realizes that there's an awful lot of people that like Ibn Zubair, uh, that are supporting Ibn Zubair. And Ibn Zubair then allies himself with the Abbasids, who are headquartered way up in Baghdad. They are the ones that do not like the, Abbas, uh, the Umayyads. There is a tension between the Umayyads right. and the Abbasids. And you can see that tension is going increase, increase, increase. So Al-Hajjaj decides that he is going to face this new direction that's not the uh, Medina, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's not Mecca, nor is it Petra, it's right in between. So he, he's, he's brilliant. He's saying, I'm not siding with this side or that side. Figured it out, we'll decide later. That's right. For okay. now, we'll go in the middle. We're going in the middle. And then he has met, there are other mosques that are come under his tutelage, all the mosques that are under his. Not just, um, we're, we're going to actually go through that, but before we go to the next slide, what I want to do is look at the, the other, the third one that comes up. Uh, because then the green one there at the bottom, Mecca, then suddenly appears uh, in, it says 109 AH, that's uh, Al Hijrah, actually that's 720, 729 AD. So as we know it in our calendar. So 720s, late 720s, almost 730s. So we're talking almost 100 years after Muhammad's death. You get the first Meccan mosque. Almost 100 years. Now remember, the Qibla was canonized according to Islamic tradition in 724. Right. We're now in 730. Six, uh, 624. Six, did I say 720? Yeah. 620. Thanks for correcting right. me. No problem. You're, uh, I'm getting, that's, I'm that's getting my old. Job. My gray hair, you can see, <laughs> I'm getting senile. So 624 is when it was... Uh, canonized. So any mosque coming after 624 should be facing Mecca. Correct. The first mosque that faces it is over 100 years later. <laughs> not 624. That's right. Not 629, 729. That's over 100 years later. And Dr. J, I mean, there is also the parallel, you know, if you can shed some light on that. And then the parallel mosques come after that. And the parallel mosques are only in North Africa. In fact, what I want to do, uh, that before we go on, let's just look at this. So there was a confusion for the next 100 years, then 20 which face Petra are then followed by 20 which are in between. These are the ones that are commissioned by Al-Hajjaj. These are his mosques. Interestingly, when he dies, they stop facing in between. Isn't that interesting? Right. So it only follows his life. In other words, what you're saying, if we look at this grove right here, there is an explanation for it. For every one of these. And Gibson's going to go into the explanation. And we're not seeing book. like 200 directions or 100 directions that don't match. No, there is a science behind four each one of them. different directions right. for four different reasons. Right. Ten face Mecca and six are parallel. Um, now, that was not finalized towards Mecca until well into the Abbasid period. They start to be finalized about 749 when the Abbasids finally take over and they supersede the Umayyads. Then they all the new mosques start to face Mecca. There are still some holdouts. You'll get the holdouts all the way up until 876, which then finally every mosque from 876 till today are now facing Mecca. So well, that's almost 200 years too late. Now let's just take a look at each one. So let's look at each one. Here's the first one right here. This is Qibla number one. This is the Petran Qiblas. Uh, and they are all facing up until 706 uniquely Petra. But take a look how far away they are. Guangzhou. Right. Do you see that way over in the right? That's right. That's Canton. That's in China. That's just across the border from Hong Kong where all these problems are having right now in the news. That's thousands of miles away. I mean, what a coincidence that they're all facing one specific location. Look at Sherman in Juma. That's in southern India. That's in Kerala. That's thousands of miles away. And look at it's facing exactly towards Petra. Now, I want you to look at Sana. And if it's in the south, it's in Yemen. It is also facing Petra, but you could almost say it's facing Mecca too, can't you? I mean, you could, but they're both north. They're both north. We're going to get to that later on because King points that out. <laughs> it's facing Mecca. Look at Sana. He wants me to say it. I would say yes, but more specifically, it's actually more correctly facing Petra. But then take a look at the ones in Anjar, Khirbat, Alminya, Jerusalem, and Jericho in the north. They're facing south, more or less towards Mecca too, because they're in the north. But where are they specifically facing? They're all Petra. Same thing. If you look at it, and this is why this argument's going to come up, because he does say this, King does say this, says the ones in the south are facing more or less north towards Mecca. The ones in the north are more or less facing towards Mecca. No, they're not more or less. This is, we're going to confront this really hard. And I wish Dan Gibson would have confronted it a little bit more difficult, more harder, because if you look at the map and if you just look at Dan Gibson's work, they are uniquely, specifically facing 
Petra, within two degrees off. 2.7 at the worst, but we're gonna get back to that thing. Let's look at the second one. Here comes the in-between, starting with Wasit. Wasit's the, right there over on the right. It's the very first one. It means it's where Al-Hajjaj is from, and that's why he built it, and it means in-between. Yep. And all the other ones that are ringed up in the north, they're all in-between, facing nowhere except halfway between Petra in the north and Mecca there in the south, the two, uh, the two circles. So this is, and they are the most specific, as we're going to see. They are the most exact. Okay, so there's Al Hajjaz's mosque. Then we're going to get to, we're going to talk about, we're not, we've already talked about between, I'm going to get to the third one, which is Mecca itself. Let's look at that one there. And you can see the Meccan wasps. There you can see those begin to appear from 727, some say 729. It could be either one of those two dates, roughly the late uh, late decade of the 720s. So it's over 100 years after supposedly the canonization. Absolutely, of Mecca. over 100 years later. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't really become unified until 876, which is 200 years later. And you can see that they, they are then finally facing Mecca. So let's continue on because this is, I want to get to the fourth one, and this is the parallel ones, which you can put up on the screen there. And the parallel ones, take a look at them. They are facing somewhere in the southern part of Africa. What in the world is in southern part of Africa? That doesn't make sense, but they all are parallel to a line between Petra and Mecca. And the reason is? We're going to get to that. So hold on to that because I want to, before I just answer this, because it would be easy just to just answer it, I would like to actually confront and say, why is it that we have these moths facing in different directions? And this is, I think, an excellent point for us to end this episode. And we, when we come back, we'll pick it up again by beginning to look at those presuppositions by Dr. King. Hopefully, everyone is enjoying this uh, series, and you can see why we're calling it the Qibla controversy. And so far, we have shown enough evidence to support, actually, uh, the work of Dan Gibson. Again, we're not here to try to judge either side, but we are trying to unpack for you the data. And now we're going to give also Dr. King his own voice in the next video or two or three, how, however long it will take us, to see his response to the data that Dan Gibson has presented. And until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video, and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.